everybody, my name is Shelby and I will be presenting on the artist Judith Scott. So Judith Scott's early history is a unique and heartbreaking story. It also speaks volumes to her later life artwork and is thus essential to start with in this presentation. Judith was born in 1943 in Cincinnati, Ohio. Judith was a fraternal twin. She was born with Down syndrome while her sister was not. As a newborn, she contracted scarlet fever, which caused her to become deaf. However, this was not diagnosed until much later in her life. Without knowledge of her deafness, verbal tests given by doctors and teachers resulted in claims that Judith was unteachable and unintelligent. She didn't qualify for the special education classes at school, and social pressure led her parents to institutionalize her at age seven. She was cut off from the world with no hearing, speech, sign language, or adequate social contact. 35 years later, Judith's twin sister, Joyce, had a spiritual prompting to move her sister out of the institution to live with her in California. Shortly after, Joyce enrolled Judith in classes at the Creative Growth Art Center. This was an art center, not a therapy or rehabilitation center. It's a partnership with people with disabilities from the community. They get to be leaders, boss the workers around, and do art all day long. For the first two years at the studio, Judith would only draw these loop-de-loop -loop designs until they completely filled out both sides of a paper and then would swipe them onto the floor. Staff began to consider dropping her from the program because she seemed unengaged and bored. One day, Judith attended a sculpting slash sewing class and was inspired to begin her fiber art career. So as you'll see on this slide, these are some of her artworks surrounding. Um, fiber art is an art form whose material consists of natural or synthetic fiber and other components such as fabric or yarn. Um, it focuses on the materials and on the manual labor of the artist as part of the work's significance. Judith's work also fell into the category of outsider art. This is art by self-taught or naive art makers. Typically those labeled as outsider artists, such as Judith, have little or no contact with the mainstream art world or art institutions. This is Judith's first sculptural piece she ever made and the only piece she ever painted. She grabbed random objects from all over the studio, tied them together with string and simple knots, and then painted it purple. To me, this piece is unique in its unbalanced, elongated form and confined mess. It comes across to me as Judith's first true expressive emotional release. From there, Judith's creative process became more intentional, skilled, and complex. She would always start by scavenging the studio, taking things that did not belong to her, and hiding them. She mostly chose items based upon their bulk rather than their characteristics. Judith was also very economical and would use every bit of what she found. The sculpture began by tying her found objects together with large fabric strips or yarn. As the form developed, she would move to using more intricate strings, threads, and objects. Judith showed extreme technique with her strings. Uh, she did not merely wrap them around the object, but she weaved and sewed the strings together, creating intense tension. The tactile sensations and repetitive motions of these actions became a sort of meditation for her. Her hands often blistered and bled from working so long. After a few days to a few months, her pieces would be done. Her staff always joked that Judith never knew where she was going with the piece, but she knew when she was done. She would wipe her hands together, push the object away, wait for a staff to shelve it, and never give it another thought. A common theme also appeared in Judith's work. Since, since Judith could not communicate in our language to explain what her pieces meant to her, others could only guess. In the piece shown, two forms appear to be reaching for each other. Double forms interacting with one another appear in several of Judith's works, and her family thinks that it represents twins, her and her sister. Joyce, Judith's twin, claimed that when they were reunited after Judith was institutionalized, she felt like she was complete again, reunited with her other half. The bond of twins appears to be the same in every language. After 18 years in her art career, Judith passed away peacefully in the arms of her sister.
So one of my favorite exhibits of Judith Scott's work that was curated after her passing was Bound and Unbound at the Brooklyn Museum. It presents one of Judith's works from each year of her art career. It's fascinating to see that as her confidence grew over time, so did the size of her forms and the objects she included in them. You can also see that Judith never repeated any forms or color combinations in her work. Judith's work draws me in with her intuitive use of color, intricate detail, and unidentifiable shapes. Lines run in every direction, leading the eye everywhere in a mass of chaotic energy. I see this explosion, her trying to fit 40 plus years of silence into 16 years of work. Each piece is full, dense, organic, unconventional, and full of tension. There's also an element of mystery in her work, as some objects she will let peek through the surface, but others she will completely cover. X-rays of her work show a variety of hidden objects, ranging from wedding rings and shoes to electronic devices. Because of what Judith has gone through, she is able to see things that no one else is able to see, and I am so glad she was able to share that with us. This is my favorite piece done by Judith. I love the shiny golden doorknob in the middle of the strings. I can't decide if it's an invitation to open it up and come in, or a statement that what's inside is a secret and locked to those without a key. I also just love the colors that she used and that neon string, the neon orange wrapped at the top. So in conclusion, the aspect of Judith Scott as an artist that resonated with me the most is that toward the end, she too became woven into her artwork. Judith's friends and family claimed that as her confidence grew, so did her headwear. She became the art she made. I like to think that she eventually cocooned herself into her own work, a sort of preservation or final statement. With that, I will conclude my presentation. Thank you everyone for listening. And here are my sources.